you know what time it is. Football season, Q4. Time to close out another year of growth and prep for the next year of revenue. To bring in more businesses Q4 and beyond, you need HubSpot Sales Hub. With a smart prospecting workspace, deal management suite, and AI-powered apps, you can take total control of your operation to generate more leads and land more sales. And when you pair a sales hub with other hubs in HubSpot Smart CRM, your team will be on the same page across the entire customer journey. Leads won't slip through the cracks, and data is connected across marketing, sales, and operations, so you can better measure your impact on the bottom line. Stop sticking to the same old strategies and start closing more deals, because the best time to score is Q4. Make the switch to HubSpot Sales Hub at HubSpot.com slash sales. What's going on, everyone? It's Wednesday, January 4th, 2023. I'm Zachary Crockett with Mark Dent, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're talking about graduate degrees. Grad school used to be seen as one of the only surefire paths into a high paying job. And in certain fields, it obviously still is. But in recent times, many experts are warning prospective students to be a bit more cautious before dipping their toes into a JD or NBA program. Mark's gonna tell us why. But first, let's take a look at what else is going on in tech and business today. Japan is giving families up to 1 million yen per child, that's about 7,600 bucks, to move out of Tokyo. That's an effort to diversify aging populations throughout the rest of the country. And the government hopes that about 10,000 people are going to take them up on that offer by 2027. Data compiled by the tech layoff tracker layoffs.fyi showed that there were 153,000 job cuts in tech in 2022. That's up from 15,000 in 2021. And finally, some decent news for Elon Musk. As Tesla stock tanks and Twitter continues to hemorrhage money, SpaceX is raising a $750 million funding round that values the company at around $137 billion. And that's reportedly led by Andreessen Horowitz. Now, here's an interesting one, especially for all the people who hate meetings out there. Shopify is banning all recurring meetings between more than two employees, and it's also going to ban all meetings on Wednesdays, period. No meetings Wednesdays at all. And lastly, adults in Oregon may now legally use magic mushrooms for therapeutic purposes while supervised by a certified facilitator. (laughs) Leave it to Oregon to be the trailblazer in that category. (laughs) And that takes us into the story today. Mark, we're talking master's degrees here. To start, just take us back a little bit. In the last recession, we saw a lot of people entering grad school sort of as a stopgap to prevent having to go into a crappy economy, right? Yeah, I mean, I graduated during the last recession, or the last big recession, we should say. I graduated then in 2009. I know you did around that same time. Sure. And it was the thing to do. And with good reason. It was hard to find jobs. Salaries were a little bit depressed compared to what they would have been just a few years earlier, even if you did get a job. Mm -hmm. And so you just had lots of people deciding to go get a master's degree, to try for a PhD, JD, MBA, all those types of degrees. I was looking back at some statistics. Cornell saw its year-over-year application rate increase by 40% from 2008 to 2009. Okay. And there were just even like small law schools that you've never heard of that saw it increase, you know, by like 20%, 30%. Yeah. There was just this real trend of people thinking, okay, the economy's not great, might as well go back to school. Yeah, a general strategy of just getting more education to stand out in a hyper-competitive job market post-recession. It's interesting, though. As you write, this time around seems to be a little different. Yeah. For one thing, there's just this general reluctance to think of grad school (laughs) maybe in the same way that people did 15 years ago for a lot of reasons. But we do have uh, somewhat of an economic downturn right now, especially Mm -hmm. in tech fields. As you just mentioned, we've seen a tenfold increase in tech layoffs, right? Between 2021 and 2022, that's legitimate. So people are losing their jobs. But, uh, you know, the difference is that this downturn isn't all that widespread yet. So if you worked at Twitter and had to deal with Elon Musk getting rid of you, there are still a lot of jobs available. And, and, And if they're not in your exact field, then you can maybe branch out a little bit further. There are a lot of openings. There's also inflation right now, as we've been talking about for the last year. Uh, right. Back in like 08, 09, prices went down. 
So that meant when you went to grad school in 2010 or so and were making zero dollars a year or, or maybe something like a few hundred to a thousand a month if you were working part time, you could cover your expenses, you know, at least a little bit better. But now you have to worry about gas being really high, eggs costing like six dollars or whatever. Right. And while you're making nothing. And and that just makes being a student just a little bit less comfortable. Yeah. Even ramen is up. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. The dorm room staples, you know, <laughs> the ultimate and, dish. and rent rent. Uh, a lot of colleges are in sort of metro centers where rent has skyrocketed as much as 20 percent year over year. Right. Right. And then there's the sort of basics. We hear a lot about student loans. Those can be crippling for people, whether they're undergrads. Mm-hmm whether they get graduate degrees, et cetera. And people just know that now, maybe more than they did, you know, 10 plus years ago. Mm. And as the Wall Street Journal pointed out, the median master's degree recipient finished with around $61,000 in debt in uh, 2016, compared to about $30,000 in 2000. Mm. So that that kind of exemplifies what we're looking at there. Mm. So you've got a trifecta. You've got sort of not quite the same dismal job market prospects for top employees, as you saw in 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. You've got inflation, racking all these student expenses from rent to eggs to whatever, books. And you've got this tuition crisis, this student loan crisis that's been getting a lot of media attention and spooking a lot of students from taking on more debt. (laughs) Yeah. And what's interesting to me, though, is we're talking about a downturn right now. And it's like these schools they are marketing themselves to people who lose jobs. Like they want people to think Mm. that they are this great safe option, especially business schools have been doing this, um, again, according to the Wall Street Journal, from what we've seen here from like Northwestern Kellogg School of Management. They've said that if you've been laid off by a big tech firm, you can go ahead and apply and don't worry about a standardized test score. Mm. Some other schools like MIT Sloan and Cal Berkeley Haas, have waived entrance fees or extended deadlines. And it's just, there's this sort of like um, kind of conundrum at hand, I guess, like where we think of schools as like these august academic institutions, but they're also a business. And when the economy does well, especially at business schools, their enrollments are down. Like Mm. they've been down for the last couple of years. And when the economy does poorly, that's when they can really like market themselves and get a lot more people to come. Wow. So are we seeing pretty widespread declines in enrollment across the board at at most grad schools? We've seen a lot of decreased applications. Sure. Enrollments are probably about the same. Wow. But in terms of the applications, yeah, like uh, I was looking at at a list of the top, you know, 10 schools, you know, where where you're talking about the Whartons, the, the MIT Sloan's, Harvard Business School, et cetera. And They have like almost across the board among the top 10 from like 2020 to 2021, they were seeing their applications go down around 10%, some 15%, 20% even. So it definitely makes a difference. Like when people are really happy about their salary and really think the economy is going well, they're definitely less likely to apply for schools like that. Wow. So historically, you know, I mean, education has always been sort of the premier way to ascend generationally and build wealth. So that fundamentally hasn't changed very much, right? So even though we're seeing sort of a shifting of the tides in grad school, we're not necessarily saying here that grad school isn't a good bet for everyone. Yeah, that's the thing is that it actually, especially if you look at the averages, it still turns out well for a lot of the people who do graduate. And that's definitely the case with business school degrees, which generally are seen as pretty good bang for your buck. It kind of just comes down to like what people want to do, like what they can afford. And if you can pay enough to where you're, you know, just not like attaining just an absurd amount of debt, then, you know, if you actually do finish and get a master's or get a professional degree, you're most likely going to make more Mm -hmm. uh, than you would have if you just had an undergraduate. That is still the case today. And it is also the case that you're going to be more likely to be sought after for a management position. And so that, of course, can lead to a higher salary and maybe potentially a better career path for a lot of people. But what it really kind of boiled down to, I think, in like 08, 09, and that sort of the millennials who were just Mm -hmm. flocking in mass to graduate school back then is that it really did just feel like this kind of diversion, this sort of thing to do instead of like actually pursuing like a true goal. And what experts are really warning against in this sort of slight economic downturn we're seeing 
is using grad school as this procrastination method. Mm. And I think that's what some people did a few years ago. And perhaps people will be a little bit more cautious and not do that so much now. Right. So if you're floundering a little bit, don't just immediately revert to the strategy of forking over $150,000 to go to business school. Maybe give it a little bit more consideration, see if there is an alternate path. Don't just use it as a sort of default thing to do if you're afraid about the economy. Yeah. I mean, that's like exactly it. The Wall Street Journal has some tools, as does the Bureau of Labor mm -hmm. and Statistics. There's something called College Scorecard. There's a lot of places that have really like eliminated some of the ambiguity surrounding a lot of master's degree programs where you can actually punch in like a school you want to go to, something that you want to study, hmm. and it will show you like on average if it's going to be worth it. As in, is the amount of debt that you're going to have to take out going to be made up for eventually by an improved salary. And so there's really actually a lot of kind of effective ways to really make better decisions. And what stood out to me when I was going through this sort of database that the Wall Street Journal set up is that for a lot of degrees, and one of the main ones that they pointed out was like, if you get like a master's in public health, the median earnings for someone who goes to Cal State Long Beach mm -hmm. and the University of Southern California a couple of years after you graduate are roughly the same, wow. even though the University of Southern California is more prestigious and more wow. expensive. So there's just like so many ways to approach it that make this whole question of, hey, should I go to grad school because I got laid off or because I'm worried about the economy that actually can give you somewhat of a specific answer if you look for it. Hmm. Well, Mark, thanks for filling us in. Yeah, of course. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer, as always, is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage for you on our newsletter. You can find that over at the hustle.co slash email. Catch you all tomorrow. Hey, I want to tell you about another podcast brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. This one is called My First Million, hosted by Sam Parr and Sean Puri. My First Million features famous guests like Alice Hermosi, Sophia Amoruso, and Hassan Minaj sharing their secrets for how they made their first million and how to apply their learnings to capitalize on today's business trends and opportunities. So for example, in a recent episode, Sean discusses how his former intern, went from making $30,000 a year to $40,000 in one minute by taking one big bet. And today, he's a 22-year-old millionaire, thanks to a couple early investments. Want to know more? You can listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts.